This limited series put me through all kind of emotions. Let's talk about the Netflix limited series, Who Killed Malcolm X? <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy, Kenny. Now, remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow all the information I have in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. Now, this is my review of the six-part um, limited series on Netflix called Who Killed Malcolm X? I have to be honest. This... This documentary took me through all kind of emotions, but uh, there was a lot of revelations that were revealed, you know, certain things that went completely under the radar, and then a lot of connections that were made. I mean, this was a very groundbreaking documentary on who actually assassinated, um, who actually assassinated Malcolm X um, on that faith on that fateful day on February 21st, 1965 at the Audubon Ballroom. And, um, the investigation is led by a man named, um, Adur, um, um, Abdur Rahman Muhammad. He's, um, he's pretty much a DC historian. He's originally from Rhode Island. Um, he talks about how he was a victim of police brutality at the age of 14. Um, he's also um, a Howard graduate, and um, in 1986 he converted to Islam. And you know he talks about how m the you know how Malcolm X inspired him, how Malcolm X really gave him a sense of pride in himself, and he feels that one of the biggest conspiracies was the day that Malcolm X was assassinated and how everything was handled actually prior to the assassination and post the assassination um forgive me but yeah forgive me if i'm tripping up on my words because this is i mean i'm not gonna lie even when i saw the movie malcolm x that was directed by spike lee after seeing that assassination scene i couldn't watch that movie for almost a month because i i literally had trouble sleeping that night knowing that this prominent um figure was literally shot down in front of his wife and children as well as in front of the black community and that not only were there other black people involved but there was a there were so many hands that that were a part of making this assassination what it was you know yeah the nation of islam had a hand but so did the new york police department so did the fbi um you know there were like so many different people who were involved and through um abdur's investigation he reveals a lot that um that was actually known years ago but has now been presented you know with a different set of eyes um he even talks about how two of the men that were um that were arrested um in connection to Malcolm X assassination, Norman Butler and Thomas Johnson both were innocent men who were framed, you know, and then you have the actual person who was one of the um, conspirators, um, Thomas Heyer, who was arrested. He was the one um, that in the movie Malcolm X, he was played by Giancarlo Epicito. He was shot in the leg and was literally damn near beaten to death by the mob right outside the ballroom and uh after um elijah muhammad died in 1977 he um um he did two affidavits where he mentioned that norman butler and thomas johnson were innocent that they had nothing to do with it as a matter of fact they weren't even at the Audubon ballroom that day and that he along with four accomplices were the ones who killed malcolm x and they weren't even from New York. They were from Newark, New Jersey. Um, the Moss number 25. And um, 
they also named the other affiliates um, Benjamin Thomas, um, William X. Bradley, who actually was the one who gave Malcolm X the fatal shot with the sawed off shotgun, um, Leon Davis and um, Wilbur Kinley. And even though um, 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 Thomas Heyer had presented this information, the judge pretty much threw it out. They, it's like they didn't even believe him. And uh, the two men, um, Norman Butler and um, Thomas Johnson, Thomas Johnson actually passed away before he could clear his name. Norman Butler is still alive, but he now has a, a new name. Um, and, you know, they also, um, you know, uh, you know, interview him through this documentary. And we see um, Abdur um, Rahman Muhammad go through great lengths to uncover all of this information and showing that not only were the people that the, the actual gunmen who killed Malcolm X were from Newark, New Jersey, which is why majority of them got away with it, um, but also that there was constant surveillance by the New York the Police Department, by the FBI, you know, the Nation of Islam pretty much was one of the biggest radical black movements, you know, you know, in history actually. And they were seen as a threat, you know, by the FBI under the under the tutelage of J. Edgar Hoover. Um, and how they literally kind of played this divide and conquer game between Malcolm X and the great a lot um and the great honorable Elijah Muhammad. And, you know, it, it was just really like, it, I will kind of equate it as the slave master watching the two slaves kill each other. Or the Romans watching the Christians getting eat by lions. You know, it was kind of like they knew the truth and yet they kind of set the stage where they knew something like this would happen. I mean, even Malcolm X even knew that his days were numbered. And he knew that, you know, that they that he was going to be murdered and that he didn't trust the police. And he definitely knew that he was a public figure, worldly known and didn't have any strong security. And they even revealed that how many agents had infiltrated not only the Nation of Islam, but also his um, organization after he broke away from the Nation of Islam. And that his one of his close bodyguards was actually an FBI informant. So the FBI was all through both organizations um, pretty much, you know, trying to destroy from within. And here it is that you had these two prominent figures, Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X, you know, Elijah was more religious where Malcolm X was more political and I think that whole political side of Malcolm X was definitely innate because his father was a Garveyite preacher who was murdered by the Ku Klux Klan so this documentary actually gives a very sharp eye to a lot of things that really happened and how a lot of people are still tight-lipped about it they're in denial. They don't want to acknowledge the actual evidence and how the actual murder of Malcolm X has gone unsolved all this time. But, you know, this is the nature of, of black men and black women in America where a lot of our crimes, you know, especially our prominent figures, a lot of their a lot of crimes that are um, violent, you know, in most cases go unsolved. I mean, take um, Jam Master J and Biggie and Tupac. You know how the evidence is there, but there are no convictions, and it's like people are literally getting away with murder. And this is exactly what moved um, Abdul Rahman Muhammad was that. This man should should have gotten justice for the fact that he was brutally murdered in front of his family and in front of his followers and that they know the players, 
but no one was brought to justice. And that was due to the fact that a lot of people had something to gain from Malcolm X's assassination. And that's what he exposes in this documentary. And it really was very moving. Um, there were moments where I was like, oh my God. And then there were moments where literally I nearly broke down in tears because it's just so sad that one of our most prominent figures who's pretty much a martyr in today's world. I mean, it's been almost 55 years since Malcolm X has been assassinated and he's still a prominent figure in our culture and in our society, you know, across the world. But yet, this man's murder has never seek justice. The two men who were wrongfully accused sat in prison where the FBI had sting operations throughout the whole organization for years. So they know who did what, but nothing was never done. And we see um, Abdur really going through, you know, the case, you know, um, point by point and really examining all of the past evidence, you know, some of the evidence that was actually, you know, that was actually available by the, by the Bureau, but was never given to the New York um, police, police department, especially during the, the actual trial of Malcolm X. It's like they just threw two people in and they got, um, you know, Thomas Heyer, who was one of the actual assassins, and just said, okay, we're going to charge them with the assassination of Malcolm X. And that's all there is to it. Even though there's a lot of evidence that contradicts that theory. So definitely check out this documentary. It's very moving. It's very compelling. It's thought-provoking. And I definitely encourage everyone to watch it. Because, I mean, I don't want to give everything away. Because there's so much that... um that was that was that um and it's um six episodes and there's a lot of information and so much that was presented um throughout this whole um piece of work but shout out to um abdur rahman muhammad i thought he did a phenomenal job with his investigation um and he didn't actually get all the answers that he wanted or didn't get the results that he wanted but one thing he definitely did was that he got to the bottom of the fact that this whole apparatus of um, Malcolm X's assassination is more complex and more sinister than 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 me CI so um that's what I have um, get down in those comments you know check out the documentary and then you know, get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know um, where your stance is in regards to the in regards to um, the assassination of Malcolm X. And um, that's all I have. So until next time, everybody, take care.